Hey everyone, are you making a board game with Unreal Engine? Do you need a bunch of tiles that potentially hold their rows and columns information? Well, the good news is I'm going to show you how to spawn a board of tiles with all of that data. Let's go. Okay, I'm in a pretty blank project here. In fact, I've even named it blank. I have my spawner here from a previous video that's just going to call a function and we'll name that function in a bit. So this is our blank guy, and this is what's going to spawn our board. Now I've already made a static mesh here as well as I have a texture for it, so this is going to be our tile with a little pixelated Minecraft looking tile. And in order to spawn those guys, we're going to need a class for those tiles. So this is gonna be called blank tile, and you can put that wherever you want. Now that we have the C++ for our blank tile here, I'm just gonna clean up some stuff. We don't need the tick at all. I'll set that to false and get rid of the default comments and get rid of that function. Okay, first things first, we're gonna want a struct in order to handle the information. So the F blank tile info is what we're going to make. We want a couple values in here. We're gonna want an X, a Y, and a Z. And then we're going to want some constructors. So a default, as well as one that takes in values so that we can set them. All right, now that we have that, we need to give it to our actual class here. So let's go ahead and drop in a little header here, and then we want F blank tile info, and we'll call it tile info. So now this will be exposed to blueprints so we can see it. We actually need to make this a blueprint type so that that can be visible. So there, that red squiggly goes away. We're gonna want a component. Specifically, we wanna have a static mesh component so that we can give it that tile. So in here in our blueprint type of our blank tile info, what we need to do is set a U property of visible anywhere and blueprint read only. Once those are set, we should be able to see it. All right, so because we have a static mesh component, we do need to set that up over here. So static mesh component is equal to create default sub object of U static mesh component. And we're going to call this static mesh component static mesh component set up attachment to the root component and that should be all we need to do there and now we're going to make the actual logic to spawn the board and all of the tiles so here we are in our blank spawner we're going to make a couple things first we have our board size and then we're also going to want an array of actors and these are our board tiles and in order to spawn them we're going to want to have the class set now let's go ahead and reveal these in the editor so this will be about a edit defaults only and a blueprint read only same for these in fact, this is actually just visible anywhere, and that can be tile class is a defaults only. Now we need an actual function to call to build the board. So this is going to be called a U function blueprint callable so that we can call it in the editor. And we'll say build board. And this is going to be an F vector. We can make it const actually, a const F vector called centered location. That's where the board will be built and then a const int of x and a const int of y. All right, make the definition and let's begin. First, we do not execute if our board tiles array already contains tiles. So, if board tiles dot num is equal to zero, we continue. Our board size dot x is going to be equal to the x that came in, and the board size dot y is equal to the y that came in. 
Now this is a 2D grid execution macro from the editor, and I've converted it to C++. We're gonna go through a for loop. We're gonna start an outer index at zero, and while the outer index is less than or equal to y minus one, we're gonna increase that outer index at the end. And then we need an inner loop, which is our inner index, also starting at zero, and we do this until our inner index is less than or equal to x minus one, and we increment our inner index at the end of each loop. We want a float const expression of sector size, 100f, that is always 100, based on one meter, a, a one meter tile. Okay, now we need to prepare a spawn transform. This is where each of the tiles is going to spawn. And this is going to be an f vector spawn location is equal to f vector static cast to a float. The inner index, we're going to subtract a static cast times a float of x divided by 2f. That's the x value. The y value is a static cast to a float of the outer index minus a static cast to float of y also divided by 2, and then the z is a 0. Now we're going to take all of that, whoops, that should be saying float. So there's our x, y, and our z. We need to take all of that and multiply it by our sector size, and then multiply that by 1, and then we're going to add the centered location to all of that. Whew, all right, so there's our vector of where we're going to spawn this guy. Now we need to make an F transform, spawn transform, and spawn transforms location is going to be set to the spawn location. So that's how we do that. Now we have a spawn transform. All right, so we're gonna check if our tile class is correct, if it is a valid set tile. And if so, we're gonna make a tile to spawn, which is going to be an actor pointer, if we wanna be explicit here. And then we're going to go with our U gameplay statics. There it is. Begin deferred actor spawn from class. We're going to pass in the world context object of this. We're going to get our tile class. We're going to load synchronous since it is a soft pointer, a soft reference. And then we need to pass in the spawn transform afterwards. So we've got an actor here, and it's ready to spawn, right? It's almost done. But we need to set the information, right? We want our tile info. So a blank tile, we need to cast to this. Our tile to spawn. And if, we don't need that to be scoped. And if tile, we set tile info, which we don't have. Whoops. All right. So go back over here, make a void set tile info function. We're going to take in an F blank tile info in tile info, and we're going to set our tile info to that in tile info. All right. We're back over here, set tile info, and we're going to make tile info. So get the F blank tile info constructor and we're going to set it to the inner index the outer index and zero so now our tile will hold information of its columns and rows once we're done with that we can take our tile to spawn and finish the spawning give it a spawn transform so that it knows where to spawn and if we want all of the tiles once they're spawned to follow the board so that you can move the board around as a one unit what we can do is tile to spawn, attach to actor, this actor, and then the attachment transform rules is keep the relative transform. Okay, that should be it. Let's go ahead and compile and get back to the editor. Whoops, I forgot a semicolon right there. All right, now that we're back in here, we're gonna make a blueprint class off of our tile. This is our BP tile. Okay, over in the tile, we want to go to our static mesh component and set that to our tile. 
So there we go. There's our tile, all ready to spawn in the world. All right, open up your spawner. So here we are on begin play. We're gonna call build board. Uh, centered location, you can keep it as an identity of just zero, zero, zero. And X and Y, let's do eight by eight. Now over here in your variables, if you do not see all of these, you need to come to this cog wheel and hit show inherited variables. And we're going to go to our blank spawner and our tile class here and make sure that this is set to BP tile. Now, if all of that is set correctly and we hit play, there you go. We now have a board set up of an eight by eight grid of tiles. And if we come out and we take a look at one of these tiles, go to config, now we can see it. And there you go, zero and two, zero, three, four, five, six, seven right, because it starts at zero, zero in the corner. You could change that if you wanted to, but because we're storing an array, it makes more sense to have the first um, column in the first row be uh, zero. And if we take our board, there's our spawner, and we move it, they're all ta attached to one another. So now you have a board that can be moved or changed at all during a game. So there you go, that's how you dynamically create a board in order to play, I don't know, chess or something on it, checkers. And each of those tiles now stores information of where it's located, so if you need to have access to that, there you go. Uh, that's it for now. Until next time, stay frosty.